So, you want to make some money. You see the demand for a certain product, let's say a chemical in this case. You get together a plan to produce this chemical on a large scale, because that's the scale you want your wall. But despite your need to bring in some cash, you also don't want to kill anyone. Or hurt anyone for that matter. Not only is this imperative to your ethical standards, but the government and your profit margin also demand you don't hurt anyone. This brings up the number one priority in every engineering discipline, safety. Crowell and LeVar define safety as a prevention of accidents through the use of appropriate technologies to identify the hazards of a chemical plant and eliminate them before an accident occurs. So basically, safety is a management and mitigation of hazards. Hazards being a chemical or physical condition that has the potential to cause damage to people, property, or the environment. Also Crowell and LeVar. So although safety is primarily centered on human protection, it also encompasses the protection of assets and the environment. In this video, we will cover the concept of inherently safe design, PSM, and RMP. And for clarity, throughout the video, set concept and safety plans will be applied to a generic reactor system. Inherently safe design is the act of designing one's process equipment so that danger is minimized in the event of equipment failure. This differs from other processes where a hazardous process is contained and controlled by active and passive safety measures such as rupture disc, employee monitoring, or reinforced concrete walls to contain a reactor. More simply put, inherently safe design attempts to avoid dangers rather than control them. Under worst case scenarios, failure of equipment built with these designs in mind will not pose a threat to workers or the surrounding communities. Examples of inherently safe design in reactors can include lowering temperatures and pressures or using non-volatile or non-toxic chemicals. While these measures alone cannot fully protect workers or the surrounding communities, Inherently safe design is proven to be the most robust and reliable safety mechanism in the chemical process industry. In December of 1984, a fertilizer plant near Bhopal, India experienced a catastrophic incident that resulted in a toxic release of methyl isocyanide, or MIC. This toxic release killed approximately 5,200 people and caused permanent disability to many thousands more. The cause was attributed to many different factors, including the deactivation of safety measures designed to treat MIC and the event of a leak and safely release it to the environment. Also, no emergency response plans were in place that could have prevented or mitigated injuries. The best strategy to prevent the Bhopal incident would have been to exclude MIC from the process to begin with and find alternative, less toxic chemicals. The Bear Crop Science-owned Institute West Virginia plant once produced MIC for the use of pesticide production. Following an incident in 2008 where a runaway reaction caused an explosion and almost damaged and released MIC, the plant reevaluated the necessity for MIC. Over the next two years, $25 million were invested to minimize the use and dangers of MIC by reducing 80% of storage, building underground storage vessels, and adding steam ammonia curtains around the perimeter of storage areas. In 2011, local residents challenged the plant's use of the dangerous toxin in court. Shortly afterward, the MIC unit was no longer used. The substitution of MIC was perhaps one of the best examples of inherently safe design. As opposed to trying to keep MIC from spreading to our communities, they simply removed the danger of the hazardous chemical entirely. Process Safety Management, or PSM, is a set of general standards and requirements that was created by OSHA after the Bhopal accident in India to manage hazards associated with hazardous chemicals. PSM's goal is to reduce the magnitude and number of accidents caused by hazardous chemicals and to protect on-site employees. This regulation is performance-oriented and requires active employee participation and adequate training on the process to be effective. PSM has 14 major sections. Employee participation, process safety information, process hazard analysts, operating procedures, training, contractors, pre-startup safety, mechanical integrity, hot work permits, management of change, incident investigation, emergency planning, trade secrets, and audits. One of the most important things with PSM is having adequate and up-to-date information about different parts of the process to be able to design proper training for employees and contractors. Also, regular audits and inspections on the status of different parts of the process, in our case the reactor, is necessary to prevent accidents. Going back to our example reactor, PSM requires that the process chemistry must be known. The release system must be appropriately designed for the reactor size and contents, and the equipment, including safety systems, must comply with current codes and practices. Also, 
The design and location of the reactor must consider hazards arising from nearby equipment, such as storage tanks or flammable liquids. The Risk Management Plan, or RMP, is the final rule published by the EPA. Like PSM, it was created in response to the Bhopal accident. This regulation is required for any plant that uses more than the specified threshold quantity of a highly hazardous chemical regulated by the EPA. RMP is like the PSM, but it is intended to protect off-site people affected from chemical releases, as opposed to on-site. The RMP is composed of four elements, a hazard assessment, a prevention program, an emergency response program, and an easily accessible documentation. The hazard assessment is a consequence analyst that takes into consideration the worst case scenarios of the release of flammable materials and toxic substances, in addition to more likely scenarios of chemicals, such as history of releases at the facility and alternative release scenarios for toxic and flammable substances reaching off-site locations. Emphasis is placed in scenarios that have a potential to reach off-site populations. The hazard assessment is only an analyst of the consequences of releases and not the probability of said releases. The Emergency Response Program is a set of steps that the employees at a facility must take in case of a release. Training must be provided and drills must be performed to revise and improve this plan. The response plan must be communicated and coordinated with a local emergency response plan and copies must be maintained at the site and must be easily accessible. The RMP Prevention Program is similar to the PSM Prevention Program and shares many elements in common. The elements covered in RMP are process safety information, hazard evaluation, standard operating procedures, training, pre-startup review, maintenance, management of change, accident investigations, emergency response, safety audits, and risk assessment. Moving back to our example reactor, the EPA's RMP aims to ensure the reactor is safe with regards to the surrounding community and environment. This includes estimation of worst case scenarios and the consequences thereof, such as a runaway reaction, a fire, an explosion, or a toxic vapor cloud. In the event of an accident, the RMP involves a prevention program, which can include reactor maintenance and operator training, or an emergency response program to ensure timely delivery of proper health care in the event that the chemicals get out. Process safety is important because it protects the livelihood of plant workers, local civilians, and the environment. When properly balanced, safety also increases profitability by decreasing occurrences of incidents which maximizes the life of assets, reducing correlated downtime, and minimizing expenses related to accidents, including insurance premiums, worker compensation, and environmental cleanup. With proper safety practice, everyone wins. In this video, we have discussed the following. Inherently safe design and how it can minimize the risk. OSHA's PSM and the EPA's RMP. We also gave very brief examples on how this could apply to a reaction vessel in the real world. We hope you have enjoyed, and remember, safety is paramount.